Hello and welcome to the second film in our Fitting Out Wall series. In it, we deal with the most common forms of wall finish. A building fit-out covers two areas, the non-load-bearing structure and building services. Walls that form part of the non-load-bearing structure are divided into partition walls, wall finishes and doors and windows. The term wall finishes comes from German standard DIN 276, which deals with building construction costs. It classifies exterior walls in cost group 330 and interior walls in cost group 340. Somewhat awkwardly, exterior wall finishes in tunnel are to be found in cost group 336, while interior wall finishes are located in cost group 345. In both cases, the term refers to plaster, render, waterproofing, insulating and protective layers, that is to say anything that can be applied to a wall in layers. Like floors and ceilings, walls can be finished using both wet and dry techniques. On the left here, you can see the application of a thin layer of wet spray plaster, on the right, the dry fitting of timber cladding. The disadvantage of wet finishing techniques is that they require time to dry. Dry techniques, on the other hand, do not provide a joint-free wall finish. As with floors and ceilings, a distinction is made between finishes that are bonded to the substrate and those that are decoupled from it. Here in the Leipzig Municipal Environment and Waste Department, the wall tiles are applied directly to the block wall. In the photograph on the right, the pipework, which is surface-mounted on the left-hand picture, is installed between the wall and its finish. It's only possible to conceal the pipes in this manner because there is a gap between the facing skin and the wall. The distinction between sound absorbing and sound reflecting surfaces is another factor that is also important in relation to walls. Hard surfaces reflect sound, increasing reverberation time and so making conversation more difficult to hear. Soft surfaces absorb sound and have the opposite effect. The wall on the left in this photograph is a smooth, sound reflecting concrete wall. The one on the right is a perforated plasterboard wall with integrated sound absorbent insulation. Now let's take a look at some typical wall finishes. Where the surface of a concrete wall is left exposed, the concrete is effectively the wall finish. The photograph shows an exposed concrete wall with a regular pattern of formwork panel joints and anchors. Where shell walls are not intended to remain exposed, a 1 to 2 mm thick coat of bonding or a 1.5 to 3 cm thick layer of plaster is applied, producing a uniform, joint-free finish to take the final coat of paint. In our sports hall at Copy School in Berlin, this type of finish provided the substrate for a public art project. A plasterboard wall installed to cover the shell wall structure and conceal service cables and pipes, for example, is known as a plasterboard facing. The interior surface of such walls is painted. In wet rooms, for example, this coat of paint may be replaced by tiles. The wall tiles in this shower are laid on a reinforced concrete wall on the left-hand side of the cubicle and on a plasterboard facing on the rear wall and to the right. In both cases, the substrate is backed with a waterproof wall sealer or membrane. Walls can also be finished in a higher quality material such as veneered wood particle board, for example. In order to compensate for tolerances in the shell construction and to ensure that the boards are fitted accurately using narrow joints, the wall is decoupled from the facing using a system of battens and counter battens or spacers. Walls can be clad using metal panels in much the same manner as with wood composite board. When using both wood and metal, it's a common practice to fit perforated cladding and to integrate sound absorbing insulation into the design. Due to the greater weight involved, the technique used to clad walls with natural stone is different to that used for metal and wood. Natural stone tiles are often bedded onto the wall structure using mortar and rear anchored to the wall to avoid them tipping forward. In design terms, deciding whether a wall surface is to have visible or invisible joints is an important choice. The differences between the wall surfaces used in the interior of our Provost Church in Leipzig and in the community hall are clear to see. Perfectly smooth, joint-free walls can only be achieved using a wet finishing technique such as plastering or priming and painting. Summary According to German standard DIN 276, exterior wall finishes internal are to be found in cost group 336, while interior wall finishes are located in cost group 345. 
In both cases, the term refers to plaster, render, waterproofing, insulating and protective layers. Walls can be finished using both wet and dry techniques. A further distinction is made between finishes that are bonded to the substrate and those that are decoupled from it and between sound absorbing and sound reflecting surfaces. Walls can be finished using bonding, plaster, tiles, metal panels or wood composite boards. A plasterboard facing can be fitted to conceal service cables and pipes, for example. Our Fitting Out Walls series continues with film number three, in which we consider what to look out for when designing interior doors.